Hi everybody! With CSS animations, it's really easy to create some pretty cool effects without a whole lot of effort. And one such effect is a jittery effect that I'm going to show you how to create that plays when you hover over a particular element. So let's get started. So first of all, let's take a look what this effect looks like. So here I have an HTML page and I have a blue square. When I hover over it, notice what happens. The square moves violently in various directions, almost as if it is currently you know, feeling very jittery. You know, maybe a lot of caffeine, who knows. But what I'm going to do in the next few minutes is talk about how to recreate this effect very simply using just CSS. So first of all, let's go to our code editor. And I'm currently using Atom. You can use whichever code editor you want. So right now, our page is pretty simple. Let me zoom in on the code to make sure you can see it. I have an HTML page, I have a little background color, and I have a div element which represents the element that I actually want to hover over to have this animation play. And the style rule for that element, in this case, a class value of square, and the style selector of square is pretty simple. It's a width and height set for 440 pixels, giving it a square look, and if we were to background color, it is a, is a blue color. So nothing particularly fancy going on in our starting point, just a blank HTML page with an element that we're going to eventually you know, animate. All right, so the first thing I want to do is we want to play, play an animation, and we want to play the animation on hover. So let's go ahead and define the, the appropriate style rule that allows that to happen. So I'm going to do dot square hover, and let's go ahead and specify the animation property. And notice that the animation property takes several, several particular values. In this case, I'm going to give it a keyframe value of jittery. I haven't created the keyframes rule yet, but we'll just call it jittery when the time comes. So this animation property, I'm going to play some keyframes named jittery. It's going to last 0.3 seconds, and I'm going to use an ease in out easing function, and I want it to run forever. I'm using a shorthand animation declaration, and you can use a longhand version if you prefer, but in my case, save some typing and save some space and just use it all in one line. Okay, great. So right now, if we're to hover over the element, nothing's really going to happen because, as I mentioned earlier, the jittery keyframes have not exactly been defined yet. So let's go and fix that. So the way you define keyframes is by using the add keyframes rule. So I'm going to add keyframes, and then let's go ahead and call this one jittery. And let me zoom up a bit so you can see it clearly. All right. So the way this effect works, as you saw, it moves the element back and forth very, very quickly. It also scales the element in and out very quickly as well. It's a combination of position changing and your element size changing that creates a jittery effect that you are currently seeing. So the two properties we're going to be using are the, the actually there's only one property we're going to be changing that is a translate sorry a transform property and within the two functions we'll be modifying are translate 3D and scale 3D so let me show you a few keyframes on what this looks like and then we will go ahead and elaborately define many more keyframes to give you that the you know, more of a random you know jittery effect that you just saw earlier so I'm going to start with the 10% mark so define the keyframe for the 10% time and let's go ahead and define a transform transform property that's how we translate 3D. And I'm using a 3D variant of it because, like I mentioned in many videos before, you, have, you get hardware acceleration when you're using translate 3D as opposed to just translate. And same with the function you're going to see next, which is scale 3D, where the scale 3D function hardware accelerates, whereas the two-dimensional version of the scale does not. So let's go ahead and you know, shift it down by two pixels, or shift it left by two pixels, shift it down by three pixels, and you know, ignore the Z value. And let's go ahead and specify the scale size as well. Let's scale it very subtly by you know, 1%, 1.01, 1.01, and ignore the Z value as well. All right, so we have the first keyframe defined, and notice that all this keyframe does is just move our element down and you know, left very subtly, and it scales it up just slightly on both the X and Y horizontal axes. Okay, great. Now here's the part where it gets a little bit boring, but the general gist is this. You want to define many keyframes, with each keyframe, you want to just subtly change what the values are that you're shifting and scaling your element by. So in this case, I've copied and pasted the previous line, changed the selector to 20%, and now I'm going to change the first you know, horizontal position, translate 3D, to 3 pixels. Let me change the translate vertical to 2 pixels, and let's scale this down this time from instead of being 1.01, it's 2.99, a very, very slight scaling down. Now, if you were to save this you know, example and see what it looks like, notice that you know, it, you can see the jittering effect slowly starting to kick in, but it's not really drastic. And really the reason because is that we only have two keyframes and that's just looping back and forth the same values. Now, what I can do is, you know, I can 
show you, you know, typing in the 30%, 40%, 50%, 60% keyframes, but I'm gonna save you some time, I'm gonna let you do that on your own. So I'm gonna copy and paste some of these keyframe values instead. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste all the values from what I created earlier for all these various, various other times. So you have now the 30%, 40%, and if you pay attention to it, notice that they're all almost similar to the keyframe that precedes it. The only variation is the numbers are slightly off to allow you to have some variation in how your elements are currently moving left and right. So if I were to save and preview this, notice what happens. You now see your element shifting around in various ways very, very quickly. And that's pretty much it to this effect. You know, it's very easy to create something where you have an animation with a lot of keyframes and a very short duration, and a few properties are changing very subtly. You know, but that all those three things combined help create this very, you know, very jittery kind of effect that you just saw earlier. And if you want to see something, you know, more crazy, in fact, change the easing function from that to a steps function, or even change the duration from 0.3 seconds to something even smaller, like 0.2 or 0.1, that's when things get really, really crazy. So have fun with this effect. It's an easy one. You can easily add it to many elements and, you know, create something cool that people may like or not like. So if you like that, to learn more, go to Coop.com. I have a bunch of articles on animation, JavaScript web development and, and various other things. So be sure to check it out. And if you need any help, the easiest way is to post in the forums. You have a lot of you know cool formatting options and real human beings, such as myself, who will be happy to help answer any questions you have. And if you want to ping me, feel free to contact me on Twitter, on Facebook, and on YouTube. And of course, a lot of the stuff you see videos on, there's a book on as well. So if you want to read these things in Kindle or paperback editions, click the link here. It can be taken Amazon where you can buy these books. And of course, if you like this video, you know, be sure to tell your friends and enemies about it. Hit subscribe, you know, the bigger the subscriber number, the happier I feel about myself. Really good thing. And follow me on Twitter and Facebook where I post many updates on various cool web development things that I'm either creating or that I found. So if you wanna, you know, keep up to date on that, you know, go ahead and follow me on those. And of course, buy a book. Buying a book doesn't just help you become better at whatever you're trying to learn, but it also helps sustain my, in this case, my very, my very expensive hobby of Cheap decorative rocks. So buy a book, help support my hobby. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.